Hello learners, welcome to Constant Learners. We've been learning about database and database management systems for quite a while now. And from this video, we're going to start learning to query the databases because we're not just storing the data in the database. We even uh, wish to use the data in the future, right? So we need some way to communicate with the database, right? So this is the first video wherein we will discuss what are relational query languages. All right, let's get started. We know that the data is stored inside the databases. This we've already discussed multiple times, right? And we're storing this data so that we can use it in the future, right? But how exactly does this entire system work? That is how we create the databases, how we store the data inside the databases, how we can read change or delete the data inside the databases. So we require two things to perform this task, the front end and the back end. The back end is the one where this entire data is being stored. That is where the databases are present and we can store the data inside the database. We can read the data. That is, if you want to fetch some kind of data from the database, we can do that also. We can manipulate or change the data inside the database and even delete the existing data from the database, right? And who performs all of these tasks? The database management system performs all of these tasks of reading, storing, changing, or deleting the data from the database. While the front end is actually an app or a website through which the user communicates with the database because when we need to request something from the database whether we are requesting to read the data store or change the data we need to enter input some kind of queries we send some queries to the database management system and then database management system performs the required task so for that we need a front end or we can see an interface for example whatsapp when we chat with someone our chats or um, the contact information or the desktop pictures or the statuses all of this gets stored somewhere in the back end inside the database right and we can access the older chats we can look at the contacts that are available on whatsapp so all of this data is stored somewhere in the back end inside the databases but what we see on our app the whatsapp messenger app is entirely different from the way the data is stored inside the databases right it is quite easier so the app the whatsapp messenger app is actually an interface that we use to communicate with the database to access our data inside the database right i hope that this was easily understandable when two people are communicating with each other, it's important that they both must understand a common language, right? Only then they will be able to understand each other. Like right now I'm speaking English. You understand English, that is why you're watching this video, right? Otherwise you won't understand anything that I'm talking about. Similarly, if a user wants to interact with a database, it is mandatory that the user and the database must understand a common language, right? And relational query language is used to do just that, that is to communicate with the databases. So we use relational query language to communicate with the databases, right? The user sends the request in the form of a query that I just told you, right? A query is actually an instruction for the database management system to instruct it or to inform it. That is what operation is supposed to be performed or what is supposed to be done inside the database. So in short, relational query language is actually used to communicate with the databases. So this is the basic of what relational query language is and why do we need it, all right? Now, there are two types of relational query languages. First is procedural query language and the other one is non-procedural query language, right? Now, in both procedural as well as non-procedural query language, we give an input to the database to receive an output. And input is in the form of a query. That is, we need to send some kind of query to the database and then we receive an output. Now, in relational databases, what are relational databases? The databases where the data is stored in the form of relations or tables. We can request the data from one or more than one tables in both the cases. 
both procedural as well as non-procedural query language. We can request for data from one table or more than one tables. Now, in case of procedural query language, the input is a set of operations. That is, we are performing some operations on one table or multiple tables to receive the output. However, in non-procedural query language, the input is a single query. All right. This is an important difference between procedural and non-procedural query language. That is, in procedural query language, input is a set of operations, while in non-procedural query language, input is a single query. All right. In further videos, we will understand what the set of operations in procedural query language are. So by giving an input in both procedural and non-procedural query language, we are informing the database management system what operations do we want to perform on the database. That is, whether we want to create the data, read the data, update the data, or delete the data inside the database, right? So in both the cases, we are doing the same thing. We are informing or instructing the database management system, that is, what are we expecting it to do with the data inside the database? Whether we wish to read the data, or we wish to store some kind of data, update the data, or delete the data. All right? But now another important difference. In case of procedural query language, that is this one, along with what operations are to be performed, we also need to inform the database management system of how those particular operations are supposed to be performed. Let's take a simple example. Let's say I have hired a new employee in my company. I told her that I needed a particular file from the HR department. So I've told her what needs to be done. That is, I need a file. But in case of procedural query language, I'll also need to tell her how she can get that file for me. That is, I need to instruct her the steps in which she needs to fetch the file for me. Like I'll tell her that she needs to go to the first floor where on the left hand side there is the HR department. She needs to go to the HR assistant named Harry and ask him for that particular file. Right. So what am I doing along with what needs to be done? I need to instruct the database management system how those operations are to be performed. That is what should be the sequence of operations. How means what? What should be the sequence of operations being performed on the database? All right, so procedural query language requires both what needs to be done and how it is supposed to be done. However, in case of non-procedural query language, we only need to instruct the database what is supposed to be done without getting into the details of how it will be done. Okay, so in this case, I will only inform the employee that I need this particular file without getting into the details of how how to get that file, right? So this is the most important difference between procedural query language and non-procedural query language, all right? Now, since we're mentioning both what and how, in case of procedural query language, of course, the queries or the programs will be lengthier, but they will also be more efficient than the programs written in non-procedural query language, right? And in non-procedural query language, the programs written will be shorter, but they will be less efficient than the programs written in procedural query language. All right. So that was basically all for this video. Main takeaway from this video is that relational query language is used to communicate with the databases. And the main difference between procedural and non-procedural query language is that in procedural query language, Along with what operations are to be performed, we also need to mention how those operations are supposed to be performed. That is the sequence of operations. And in non-procedural query language, we only need to inform the database what operations are to be performed and we will get our desired results. So that was all for this video. In the next video, we will discuss what relational algebra is and slowly we'll get into all the operations that can be performed on the database, all right? And relational algebra is the base for structured query language, which is highly used for communicating with the 
database in today's times. So it is important that we understand these operations very well. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more informative content. Thank you so much for watching.